Okay, got another kit for you here. I think this was Fulmer, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think it's Fulmer. It's hard to say on his jersey. Um, we're going to see a lot of the same common things. I like this kid's setup a lot more. As you can see, his feet, he's not overly uh, pronated with his toes. Excuse me, super, uh, pronated with his toes. But he's got a good, nice, uh, deep stance with his legs as he kicks. Again, we kind of got the same idea that as he's kicking, his shoulders and everything are all kind of moving towards second. In this kid's case, a little bit towards first as he's kind of rotating open there. Kicks up, gets himself into the exact same spot again. This is going to be pretty common amongst everyone, I think. Uh, comes on out opposite and equal. Nice little tuck going on right here. As you can see, his gloves softening up before even foot strikes. So... This is kind of a common thing I'm seeing with everybody, and uh, this is a result of uh, trying to throw too early. Um, again, the, the idea that everybody's worried about where their left leg is going instead of letting their left leg land where it's going to land, that makes a big, big, big difference. Opposite and equal again at foot strike. If you notice right there, we are at foot strike. Opposite and equal isn't that equal in his case. Uh, would be much better for him to have his glove out there just a little bit more and a little bit more balanced with his right arm. Uh, he's got a little bit better sequencing. His hips going along there. His shoulders are coming. Hand is holding back quite a bit. Elbow wants to kind of come with his shoulders there so we can uh, separate him a little bit more there. Again, 80% of your velocity is going to come out of your hip and shoulder separation or disassociation, which is at its maximum at opposite and equal. The longer we can hold on to opposite and equal, the better for the kid's health and the better for his performance. Um, his, his head is a little bit better than most of the other guys until about right there. Right there you can really see, I mean, he's really got his head dipped over toward first base big time. If we were looking at him from the back point of view, you'd really see him on a line that way, tilted over. The more balance we can keep him or keep him level with the ground with his head and his hat right there, again, he's going to increase uh, his consistency a great deal more and, again, be a little bit more efficient or a lot more efficient. His back leg, you're, again, you're going to notice everybody wants to do it. Even if they're not dragging their leg at release when their ball's coming out, they want to drag that or dig that foot down into the ground. That's very, very common, which is why we don't really care if the drag line is dotted or a perforated type of line. I don't care if it's a curly cue. I don't care if it's straight. All I care about is that he's making the drag line, that that drag line ends in the center line coming to home plate. As I was telling all the kids, if you imagine a line coming out of home, uh, out of the pitcher's plate, going to home plate, the drag line should finish in the middle line. That means they're square to the target at release and helps, uh, helps with consistency a lot. The back leg acts as a rudder, helps to control where the ball's going. Um, <clears throat> next little thing I want to point out with here, again, to be in a position where he can play defense. He's got a pretty good stance coming forward right there. Um, he's going to be able to defend himself a lot more than uh, some of the other kids I'm seeing as we're going along. Uh, but the, op the biggest thing for everyone at this point is being at a good position in opposite and equal right here when they get the foot strike and then working from foot strike. So in practice with drills with these kids, the biggest thing that they need to do is just to work from opposite and equal. Everything in front of opposite and equal is going to, dis it's going to increase uh, their abilities or to, to mess this part up. So if we minimize error just by going from the middle stage, it's almost like we're going to work totally backwards. We're going to start from opposite and equal and work to ball release. Using the towel is a great way to do that. They can just work turning their hips or shoulders or elbow and then snap the towel on the wall on a doorknob, uh, any of those things that help them to get uh, that repetition that they need there. It takes a thousand reps for something to become uh, in your body, for something to you actually learn it. It takes 10,000 reps for it to become automatic and then you know about 10,000 hours for mastery to the point where you can do that without thinking about it anymore. Anyway, hope these are helping.